Welcome to the sixth lecture in quantum field theory. Now we will begin, uh, this is the first part of our two lecture series basically, where we will just dedicate ourselves to mastering the gamma matrices. Okay, so we will be using gamma matrices and tensors throughout the course. So within the next two lectures, we will focus on the gamma matrices, and then we'll do some more work on tensors as well. Um, so this is where you will slowly begin to feel much, much more comfortable. So this first lecture of mastering the gamma matrices will focus on the remaining gamma matrices. Now, what do I mean by that? So far, we found the gamma matrices, gamma mu, to be four, right? We know there are four gamma matrices. As a reminder, the index mu goes from zero to one, two, three. And any Latin indices, i, j, k, l, for example, they go uh, from one to three, okay? Um, so gamma mu means that there are four matrices, gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. We have seen in the past um, some examples of representations for those matrices, and it is not really the, the point to, to go through it again now, even though, of course, we can at any time just write them out explicitly in any given representation, all of them are equivalent. But the problem is that, as you may recall, these gamma matrices are four by four. Each one of them has four uh, elements in each row and each column. So in total, we have 16 elements. So if we want to actually uh, use this as a complete uh, a set of matrices to span the entirety of space, well, we need 16 linearly independent matrices. Now, there are many choices you can do here, and I don't think it's uh, worth it to try to come up with, with this choice itself, because a lot of it does come from a posterior necessity, and these other matrices will also have a deeper meaning, but I will just uh, show you now what the convention is, which are the matrices that people usually uh, like to use, and some properties uh, for them which will let us get more comfortable with the notation and just the concept of gamma matrix itself. So we already have four matrices, right? So we need 12 more. Now another matrix that we can add is going to be the unity matrix, right? Just the four by four unity matrix, right? one, 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 and a bunch of zeros. Okay, so with this, we have five matrices in total. Okay, so we need to come up with some more. Now, another choice of matrix that is uh, generally used is the gamma uh, five, which is written like this, gamma five, which is I gamma zero times gamma one times gamma two times gamma three, right? It's, it's quite easy to remember. Now there is a more generalized way of writing it down, but we will talk about that in the next part of this uh, lecture video, where we will just focus on a lot more properties. Now I'm still going to introduce these new concepts and then just work a little bit with properties and the next video will just be full focus on properties and uh, some example problems of working with matrices. So gamma five, is another one. So with this, now we have another another one. So in total, we have six now. And so six in total for now. So we still need a little bit more. So now there is another possibility. So what we can do is say gamma five and multiply this by gamma mu. Okay, so when we do this, uh, now we have four more because there are four different uh, mu's, right? Zero, one, two, three. So we have now four more, so now we are totaling 10. Now this does prompt a question and it's also a nice opportunity for us to practice a little bit. Um, what is the connection between gamma 5 and the gamma mu's? Do they commute or anti-commute, right? Now we are going to be talking about anti-commutation because as you may recall, the Clifford algebra is what defines um, the, this entire uh, matrix set and what is the Clifford algebra? You have to remember this. This is just incredibly important. The Cl Clifford algebra is what we saw the, as the anti-commutator of gamma mu gamma nu. This is equal to two times the metric mu nu, right? Uh, so this is what we call the Clifford algebra. This defines uh, how these matrices behave, basically. So Clifford algebra. Okay. So using this, we can now easily see if the gamma 5, uh, gamma mu matrices anti-commute uh, or not. 
So what we do is simply we say, all right, so wh what's the deal with gamma 5 gamma mu? Does it anti-commute or not? So, well, let's just expand this, right? Let's just use the definition of what an anti-commutator is, right? It is simply gamma 5 gamma mu plus gamma mu gamma 5. Now, in the future, we will see a way in which we can write down gamma 5 in like general terms with a Greek indices. Um, and then we won't have to do this explicitly. But if you now want to calculate this, what we can do is say, all right, let's separate mu into zero and i. Right? That, those are the two cases. Either mu is zero or it is one, two, three. And we usually separate it like this because of the way that the metric, uh, it, it, the metric works. Why? Because the metric has a bunch of zeros in the zeroth co column and row, and then all the other things in the ith. So it behaves a bit differently. Okay, um, so let's go for the case mu is equal to zero. So in that case, right, keep in mind, why do we separate this? Because this is an implicit sum, right? So we, we have each case working at the same time. So in the case mu is equal to zero, we have gamma five, gamma zero. This is something you can always do, by the way. It won't al always be the fastest, but it always works. And now let's just write down gamma five. So it is ga i, gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, and gamma zero in the end. And then we have plus i, just putting it in front, gamma zero, gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Okay, so this i used to be there, I just moved it uh, to the front. Okay, so now what do we do? So this is where you need to recall the Clifford algebra and you have to know how to use it. Okay, so what happens here with gamma zero, gamma zero, for example? Well, let's go to the Clifford algebra expression right there. So if we have gamma zero and gamma zero, just put in gamma zero, gamma zero into the anti-commutator and see what happens. So this is equal to two times the zero zeroth element of the matrix, right? Zero zero. This metric, this thing right here is simply a number, right? It is simply the mu nth element of the metric. And what is the metric? The metric that we are using, again, you can use a different convention. I am using the convention one, minus one, minus one, minus one, right? You could be using the minus one, 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 one uh, convention, which is also perfectly fine. Um, I just like this one. It's the one that I, I learned this with and I'm just more comfortable, but it's completely the same. Um, you may have like a, some differences in, in science in the intermediate steps, but the important results are of course the same. The physics is the same. Okay, so this is eta mu nu. So that means, right, mu is going to be the index of the rows and nu of the columns. So zero, zero is going to be the zeroth row, the zeroth column. So that means this element right here, this is eta zero, zero. Okay, and just to make this clear, this is eta zero i, those ones right there are eta i zero, and well, and so on. And then you have here the i i's or i j's, depending on, on where we stand. Okay, so this means that two times eta zero zero, this is two, all right? And then we have gamma zero, gamma zero, the anti-commutator, which is gamma zero times gamma zero plus gamma zero, gamma zero. So this means that two has to be equal to two times gamma zero squared, whatever it is. So from here, well, we can easily see that gamma zero squared is one, All right? So uh, gamma zero squared is one. So uh, where did we have it originally? Um, right here. So here in gamma zero squared, it's one. So bye-bye, no need to worry. So gamma zero squared, is gone. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, now what we want to do is anti-commute this gamma zero and try to connect it with the other gamma zero because if we do that, well, then they will just uh, go to one. Gamma zero squared will, will be one, so that's what we want to do. Um, but can we do it? What is the, right, if we want to, to change the order of the multiplication, we need to know whether they commute or anti-commute. Right, we need to know what the relationship is. So let's go to the Clifford algebra once again. So the Clifford algebra, this time for gamma zero and gamma i. 
right? We want to know if gamma zero commutes or not, or anti commutes, right? We just, well, this is the anti commuter, so that's what we're checking here. We want to know what is the, the deal with um, gamma zero and gamma i. Gamma i, of course, one, two, three, right? You could do this for the separate case gamma zero, gamma one, gamma zero, gamma two, gamma zero, gamma three, but gamma one, two, and three, they all behave in the same way. Um, so, for, for the, and what do we mean by that? I mean, um, in the matrix, uh, these three elements are the same. So in the end, uh, there's a symmetry here that allows us to, to just do this in, in, in just a quick step. Okay, right, basically with the cases that we separate depend on, on the matrix, on, on the, sorry, on the metric. Okay, so let's just write down the expression for the anti-commutator, so gamma zero, gamma i, whoops, sorry, gamma zero, gamma i, plus gamma i gamma zero, this is equal to two times the zero ith element. Okay, so what is that? Zero ith element, or i zero, it doesn't matter, it's symmetric, is zero. All of these elements are zero, right? You can see that for one, two, and three, it's the same, which is precisely why we can group them up and do this faster without having to go through every single step. So this is two times zero, so simply zero. So that means that gamma zero gamma i is equal to minus gamma i gamma zero. And this is very important. This means that we can simply change the order of gamma zero and gamma i, and we put a minus sign in front. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So now we go back here. Now, if we want to see what happens between gamma i and gamma j, for example, so between gamma one, two, three, and gamma one, two, three, you do the same thing, but this time you put different uh, indices in there and you can see what happens. Okay, so this means that if we move gamma zero to the left, right, if we change the position of gamma zero and gamma three, for example, so now we have zero here and three there, we have to put a minus sign in the front to make sure that this is legal. Now we move gamma zero to the position of gamma two. So this time we move two to the right, so we get zero, two, and we get another minus sign, which will be positive now. Then we do it again. We swap one and zero. So, oh, wait. Okay, there we go. And this will be zero. This will be one. And we have to put another minus sign in front, which gives us negative again. And now we have gamma zero squared, which is one. So in the end, we get minus i times this plus i times the same thing. So zero. <laughs> and that was the, the whole point of what we are doing. So in the case mu is equal to zero, we can see that this thing right there uh, is going to be equal to zero. So the anti-commutator is zero, which means that gamma five and gamma mu anti-commute. Okay, so that, that means that you can switch the positions, but putting a minus sign in front. That's, that's what it means. Okay, so now let me maybe get rid of some of these things which we have already used and go for the case where mu is going to be equal to i. All right. Is there anything underneath or? No, okay. So now let's go for the case where mu is equal to i. So mu is equal to i. Now in this case, we write the commutator explicitly once again, just like before. This time we are doing with gamma i. So we get gamma five, gamma i plus gamma i gamma five. So let's multiply through. So here we get i gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, plus i gamma i gamma, oh, sorry, I forgot to put the gamma i at the end here. So let me just correct it really quickly. So gamma i, and then we have uh, plus gamma i, and i gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Now here you could just say, okay, i is equal to one, i is equal to two, i is equal to three, and do each case separately. We are going to do it a little bit faster. Once again, Clifford algebra. So we go back into our expression for the Clifford algebra. Now we see why they're so important. So gamma, um, we want to see gamma i with gamma, let's say, j. All right, so here, of course, there are two cases. i is equal to j, and also i is different from j. So gamma i, gamma j, this is for the other case. So in the case where they are the same, right, we get two eta 
i, j. When they are the same, it means that we are on the diagonal, minus one. So that means that we have here minus two. So here. So if they are the same, then we get right, gamma i, gamma j, this will be gamma i, gamma i, plus gamma i, gamma i, right, because gamma i and j are the same, so we get minus 2 is equal to 2 times gamma i squared, so here we get simply that gamma i squared is equal to minus 1, so before we got that it is 1, now it is minus 1. Okay, um, so that's what we find from there. And in the case where they are different, this will be two times eta i j, but this time i and j are different. So now we are not on the diagonal. Now we are either here or here, depending on what exactly the, the numbers are. Okay, so those are our possibilities, but they are all zero, so we don't really care, right? That's why we, we do these separations, because we they are different cases. We always have to separate into all the different cases. So this will be two times zero, again, well, zero. And this is equal, so zero, zero is equal to gamma i, gamma j, plus gamma j, gamma i. So this means that gamma i, gamma j is equal to minus gamma j gamma i, right? The anti-commute, you can change their order but putting a minus sign in front to compensate. Okay, so that means that we can do exactly the same as before, right? We can um, move them around and I guess here we, we could just separate this into each case just to make this very, very, very clear. So if i is equal to 1, we have i gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 1 plus i, gamma 1, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And here on the right side, we can switch the order of this and this, which gives us gamma 1, gamma 0. And well, gamma 1 squared is minus 1, so we get a minus in front, which was, will cancel out the other minus, because one minus came from switching out the order here, so we get minus, and then this squared gives us another minus, so in the end it is positive. Okay, and then here we have to switch 1 and 3. So this will be 1, this will be 3 with a minus sign. Then we switch 1 and 2. So this will be 1, this will be 2 with another minus sign. But this thing here will be minus 1. So we get another minus sign. And then these two things cancel out. So this is 0. And in the case i is equal to 2, it's going to be the same thing. I'll just show you very quickly just to make sure that it is very clear i gamma 0 gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 2 plus i gamma 2 gamma 0 gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 what i want you guys to be very 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 clear on is that you can always do this you can always <clears throat> just put or write down what mu what i is right don't get confused by the the fact that you have those weird greek or latin indices okay um, so here we can change the order of 2 and 3 with a minus sign. So this will be 2, 3 with a minus sign. And then we can also change the order. Um, let's see, I, I guess it, there's no faster route. So this is 2, this is 1 with a minus sign in front. Then we change it again. So there we go. With another minus sign in front. And gamma 2 squared is <laughs> minus 1. So another minus sign in front. And the same thing here, this is minus 1, so we get another minus sign in front, which will be positive, and those things cancel out. And you can probably see that the same thing will happen for um, gamma 3, but I'll show you anyways. I, gamma 0, gamma 1, I do encourage that you also do this at the same time. If this is the first time that you're encountering this, it is very, very, very important uh, that you go through all of this, even if it looks obvious, because when you do it yourself, sometimes you find questions that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. So don't just look, do. Okay, so these two things here, gamma 3 squared, this is minus 1. And then we have to switch. Now, let's do this fast. We have to switch once, we have to switch twice, we have to switch three times. So that gives us three minus signs, which will give us a minus in front. So this will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. This gives us another minus sign. And this is positive. And it's also 0. 
<clears throat> there we go. So we have seen that in every single case, this anti-commutator is zero. So in the end, gamma zero, uh, gamma mu, sorry, gamma five, gamma mu, I wrote it a bit wrong here. Gamma five, gamma mu, anti-commutes. So there we go. Okay, just a little bit of practice here. Okay, so currently we have 10 matrices. We have four gamma mu's. We have the identity, which is one, of course. We have gamma five, uh, five, sorry, I keep running it. What's going on here? Why is it not erasing there? Gamma five, which is also one. We have gamma five, gamma mu, which are four. Um, now, by the way, just to make this, you know, a bit more clear, we can see what gamma five, gamma mu look like. Um, so gamma five, gamma zero, if we choose the representation that we have been using so far, gamma, gamma five is zero i, and that here this is the, uh, the unity two by two matrix, this is two by two. Right? This is implicit, we know that uh, the gamma matrices are four by four, so if you write it in blocks like here, this is a two by two zero, this is a two by two zero, this is a two by two unity matrix, right? I'm not always writing it down because everything is always this size, so we are going to just be writing down things forever if we do it. Okay, so this is gamma five, and gamma zero we had defined as the two by two unity matrix, zero, zero, minus the two by two unity matrix. So multiplying through, we get zero times unity, unity times zero, so zero, zero times zero, unity times minus unity, so minus unity, and unity here, zero. Okay, so this is what gamma five, gamma zero looks like. And you can see, of course, that it, that it is not linearly dependent on gamma five. It looks kind of the same, but it has a minus sign that the other one does not. And then we can go for the gamma five, gamma i's, for example, which are going to be zero unity, unity zero times the gamma i's that we defined as zero sigma i minus sigma i zero. And multiplying through, we get zero, zero, uh, zero. Here we get minus sigma i, zero, zero here in the diagonals and sigma i down there. Okay, so that is the explicit form of these matrices in case that you ever need to use them. Of course, this is in a particular representation. If you chose gamma five or your gamma i's in a different representation, you will see the matrices to be different, but it does not matter. Different representations can be useful in different contexts, but they are all equally valid. Okay, so just stick to whatever one you are using or whatever one your teacher uses, um, but just keep in mind how you do the operations, right? That's the only thing that changes. Okay, so now we need six more matrices and the, the ones that we will use are going to be sigma mu nu, okay? So now these ones are going to be very important. We may not see exactly why at the, right away. I will give you some hints, um, but I will show you how to use them and in time we will uh, see enough of what they do and you will see how important they are. So these matrices we will define as i over two and the commutator, not anti-commutator, commutator, do not get it confused, gamma mu, gamma nu, and well, now we, we, we can write this down explicitly to see what this looks like, and this will be, well, i over two times gamma mu, gamma nu, minus, because it is the commutator, gamma nu, gamma mu, and now we can uh, find a, a new way to write this down. How, you may say? Well, because we know that we, the Clifford algebra, always, 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 the Clifford algebra. So the Clifford algebra says, again, gamma mu, gamma nu, the anti-commutator, not commutator, this is two times eta mu nu, all right? So wh what is the anti-commutator? The anti-commutator is gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu. I think maybe my camera is covering that um, a little bit. So now we just, from here we can see that gamma mu gamma nu is equal to two times the metric, right? The, the mu nu element of the, of the metric minus gamma nu gamma mu. And of course we can also find that gamma nu gamma mu is going to be two times eta mu nu minus gamma mu gamma nu. <clears throat> okay, so now we can use this 
to rewrite this. So we have i over 2. This is going to be. Now let's replace gamma mu gamma nu. So gamma mu gamma nu is this thing right there. So just plug it in. So this will be 2 times eta mu nu minus gamma nu gamma mu minus gamma nu gamma mu. So we get 2 times gamma nu gamma mu. So the 2s will cancel out. So this cancels out with the 1 half. And this is one way of writing down this matrix. Another way of writing it down, which is also equally valid, is taking this expression and plugging this in. So if we do that, we get i over 2 gamma mu gamma nu minus, and now gamma nu gamma mu here, minus 2 eta mu nu plus gamma mu gamma nu. So here we get i over 2 times 2 times gamma mu gamma nu minus 2 eta mu nu. And just to make this look more like the other one, of course, we cancel out the 2s. But we also factor out a minus sign because that way it looks a bit more like this. And we get minus i eta mu nu minus gamma mu gamma nu. And this gives us some very interesting insight into this matrix. So into this tensor, sorry. And you may say, well, why? Well, because these two expressions, so maybe let's get rid of the intermediate one. So not this. <laughs> um, this, these two, so this and this, they are basically the same. But the difference is that we changed nu mu mu nu and we add a minus sign. Now, what happens if you have a tensor or a matrix, matrix may be more familiar to you, and you change. So for example, if we have some matrix A, I don't know, and you have element 1, 3, and you also have element 3, 1, and they are the same, except that you have a minus sign in front, right? This is what you call an anti-symmetric matrix. And this is a tensor, so this is an anti-symmetric tensor. So that is very important. This means that sigma mu nu is equal to minus sigma nu mu. So this is a very important property of these new uh, gamma matrices that we call sigma uh, for reasons that we are about to discover. So to better understand these, let's do the following. So let's just write them out explicitly like we have been doing. So what is gamma 0, gamma i? Right, well, as usual, we're going to um, just see what is gamma 0, gamma i. And by knowing this, we will also know what gamma i, gamma 0 is, because they are anti-symmetric. OK, so we don't have to worry about the other case. So gamma is, sorry, sigma 0, sigma i. So, so, so sigma 0, i, there we go. This will be, so by definition, what did we say? We said that this is i over 2. Well, I, I guess you can go either from, from this definition or you can go from any of those definitions. Actually, going for those will make things a little bit simpler because they are, you know, just to plug everything in. So let's go for the, for the one that with a positive sign. So let, let's go for this one. So if we say gamma 0, gamma i, that means i times eta 0 i minus gamma i gamma 0. What is eta 0 i? Well, eta 0 i is simply 0, right? So let's, where did we have the matrix? Um, the, the, the metric is here. So eta 0 i is either 0 or 0 or 0. <laughs> so yeah, it's very much 0. Um, so this first part is 0. And then we have minus i gamma i gamma 0. And well, here we will have to write it down explicitly. If you had chosen to use this part instead, you would have gotten minus i times 0 minus gamma. Now, it's the other way around. So this would be gamma 0 gamma i, which gives you i times gamma 0 gamma i. Right. So that's uh, the other case. And you can see that these are the same because gamma i and gamma 0, as we saw before, anti-commute. So you can change the order of those two gammas by putting a minus sign in front, which cancels it out. So you get gamma 0, gamma i, which is the same as you, what you have down there. So it doesn't matter which one you chose. In the end, this is the product that we have to do. 
So let's do it. So now we choose any representation. I'm going to keep choosing the, the same one that we have been uh, choosing. So i, gamma 0, gamma i. This will be i times unity 0, 0 minus unity. You don't have to know this by, by memory. I mean, any. I don't think any teacher would ask that of you. You can just have them written down somewhere and look it up. Okay, and these are the gamma i's as we saw before. So here we multiply through uh, i times 0, 0 times sigma. So that's 0. And then we have uh, i times sigma here. So we get sigma i. And then we have this 0 times 0 minus. So we get minus minus. So we get positive sigma i 0. All right, so what we have here, and of course, this multiplied by i. Here we have i times sigma i in each one of our entries, if you just multiply through. And this is actually something that we have seen in the past. So this is what we previously called i times alpha i. Now, this alpha i, is, those are simply the alpha matrices that we defined uh, when we found the, uh, the Dirac equation, right? These alpha i simply being 0, sigma i, sigma i, 0, right? So those are the matrices that we defined uh, a few lectures ago. Now we do the exact same thing, but just to see what um, the sigma i, j are, okay? And by the way, be careful. I know that we have sigma 0 i and sigma i's. If you have... The, these two indices there, right? We have a two rank tensor. Um, that just means that this is going to be the gamma matrix that we call sigma. While when they just have an index here, uh, that just means they are the Pauli matrices that we are used to, okay? So sigma ij, this is going to be, well, again, we go back to any of these definitions. So sigma ij, um, here we have a, a few cases. So this will be i or minus i, I'm just going to use that one, sigma i j minus gamma i gamma j. Now notice of course that i and j will have to be zero, right? This is an anti-symmetric uh, matrix and that of course has to be, right? It's an anti-symmetric uh, matrix if you want uh, sigma I don't know, 1, 1 to be equal to minus sigma 1, 1, then you need that element to be 0. And you can see this um, because if you take i to be equal to j, then we have, in the case i is equal to j, we have minus i times eta i i, which in any case is going to be minus 1, minus gamma i squared, which we already know is minus 1. So this thing here will be plus one, so we get minus one plus one, so this thing is zero, all right? So that, of course, makes sense. It agrees with what we expect. Okay, so this is going to be valid for i is different from j. I mean, it's valid for i equal to j too, but now we go to the i different from j case. Okay, so in that case, we have minus i, this thing will be zero, so zero, minus gamma i gamma j, so again, i gamma i gamma j. Um, so here we simply just plug in what it is. So i times, and now we have the, uh, the Pauli matrices. So we have uh, 0, sigma i minus sigma i 0, 0, sigma j minus sigma j 0. All right, so nothing too crazy there. And now, let's see, we multiply it through, so 0, 0, sigma i, sigma j, so minus sigma i, sigma j, we still have the i in front. Then we have 0 right there, 0 right there, minus sigma i, sigma j. Okay, so now the question is, well, uh, what is the product sigma i, sigma j? This, you, we simply have to go back to the product uh, of the Pauli matrices, and the product of sigma i, sigma j is simply minus i, times the Levi-Civita ijk sigma k. Okay, 0, 0, minus i, epsilon i, j, k, sigma k, right? So this means that uh, it, it depends exactly what is going on. If we are multiplying sigma 1, sigma 2, then our result is sigma, simply minus i, sigma 3. But if you're multiplying sigma i, sigma i, uh, then you go into this uh, definition here. If you have two double indices, the Levi-Civita will be zero, so you will end up with zero. Um, so that's how you can see this, right? The, just a quick reminder, the Levi-Civita symbol here, epsilon i, j, k, this is going to be zero if any of the indices are repeated. 
right? If repeated, it will be one. If we have even permutations of one, two, three, we talked about the Levi Civita symbol in the first lecture, I think. So if you're unsure, you should uh, go back there. I'm just doing a quick recap. And it will be minus one if it is an odd permutation. So even here and minus one it is if it is an odd permutation of, uh, of what we initially have, one, two, three. Okay, so that means one permutation, odd, um, you have a minus one, even you get a positive. Okay, so that's what we have. Um, so, well, we can just write this uh, simply. We can we have i's which will cancel out. The minus signs cancel out. So we get epsilon i j k times this matrix of sigma k zero zero sigma k. And this matrix, uh, we have also seen this matrix, and this is where the important thing begins. This matrix is the matrix that we saw was related to spin. Uh, so when we studied the spin of the Dirac particle, we saw that the spin operator is one half times this matrix right there, right? Which is, and it makes sense, right? It's related to the Pauli matrices, which we know in quantum mechanics also were related to spin. Um, so now we can see that these matrices, the sigmas, Oh, they also end up with a bunch of um, Pauli matrices in both of, of the, those cases. All right, so let's try to make the connection just a little bit more uh, clear. So what we just found right, is that this is what sigma i j is. Okay, so now we can do this, uh, perhaps we can go a little bit further here because we want to basically write down uh, alpha k in terms of the uh, of these new matrices, or basically just connect them a little bit more. Basically, we want to get rid of this um, epsilon here of this Levi Civita symbol there. And it's also a good practice for you to understand how to work with the Levi Civita symbol and hopefully understand it a little bit better. So something we can do to get rid of it is basically to multiply uh, by yet another Levi Civita symbol um, where we have just some of our indices repeated. So what we do is we have epsilon i j k times alpha k hat. This is equal to, uh, let me make some room, sigma i j. And now what we will do, so the indices that here are basically bound are K and K, they, they, these ones will contract. And I, J is the, the, are the indices that survive, of course, right? That's the indices that we have here. Now, what we will do is we multiply by epsilon. I think that's not enough room. So by epsilon, and we introduce a new index, L, and then we just keep J and K. So we are simply going to be uh, varying one of those just to get rid of this Levi Civita symbol now. Uh, where this comes from, this is basically a trick that you will encounter every now and then. Uh, my intention here, more than f uh, knowing, so we are multiplying both sides, by the way, more than knowing when to use it or something, I just want us to work with the Levi Civita symbol a little bit. That's why I want to do it like this, because I think this will give us some very nice insight. Okay, so what is uh, going to be uh, happening here is the following. So what we have is this product of these two Levi Civitas. And you have to keep in mind, we are using a convention where these repeated indices imply a sum like we saw in the first lecture or second, I don't really know when we talked about it. So this means that basically we are saying we sum over all possible values of J, which goes from one to three. We sum over all possible values of K, which go from one to three. And what do we sum over? Well, we sum over the product of epsilon L, J, K, times epsilon i j k. And well, of course, we also have to multiply times alpha k, but I'm just going to factor it out, right? Because we're going to be worrying about this part. And then we multiply in the end times alpha k. So what is going on with this part right there? So here, well, let's just write it down explicitly. So this will be a little bit annoying, but let's go. So epsilon l, and we have to go through every single case, one, one, Epsilon one, uh, this is sorry, um, this is i, j, k. So i, one, one, plus epsilon, l, 
1, 2, epsilon i, 1, 2, plus epsilon 1, uh, sorry, l, 1, 3, times epsilon i, 1, 3. Then we go, plus epsilon l. Now we went through all the possible va values for 1 here uh, with this. So now we go for 2, 1, epsilon i to 1, plus epsilon l to 2, epsilon l, sorry, i to 2, plus epsilon l to 3, times epsilon i to 3. And finally, epsilon l 3, 1, epsilon i, 3, 1, plus epsilon l, 3, 2, epsilon i, 3, 2, plus epsilon l, 3, 3, epsilon i, 3, 3. <sighs> okay, so now what is going on? Now we have to go through this and see what possible values there are for all possible values of L. So if L is equal to one, what do we get? So let's just go through this. If L is equal to one, so actually we can simplify this even before that. So let, let, me, let me take a moment before that. Because we know that the Levi Civita symbol is zero if any two, whoops, how did I do that? <laughs> if any of, um, Okay, I don't know how to get rid of this. Oh, there it is. If any of the of the symbols in, involved, of any of the indices are repeated. So this is zero, this is zero. Then this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. So all those are zero in every single case. So we don't even worry about that. Okay, so that already makes things a little bit easier. So now we go into each case. So what happens if i is equal to 1, for example, or l is equal to 1? I don't care. So if i is equal to 1, we get epsilon l1, 2, epsilon 1, 1, 2, plus epsilon l1, 3, epsilon 1, 1, 3, plus epsilon l2, 1, epsilon 1, 2, 1, plus epsilon L to 3, epsilon 1, 2, 3, plus epsilon L 3, 1, epsilon 1, 3, 1, plus epsilon L 3, 2, epsilon 1, 3, 2. So if i is equal to 1, this thing will reduce. Let's see. So this is 0 again because we have a repeated index. So repeated index 0. Uh, then we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, repeated index. Goodbye. Uh, this also has a repeated index, goodbye. 1, 3, 1, repeated index, goodbye. And all that we have left is this. So maybe let's put it together. So in this case, we get epsilon L to 3, epsilon 1 to 3, plus epsilon L 3, 2, epsilon 1, 3, 2. So in this case, what is epsilon 1, 2, 3? Well, that is an even permutation of 1, 2, 3. It is simply 1, 2, 3, so this is 1. 1, 3, 2, it is 1, 2, 3 if you switch these two, which is one permutation. So that means this is minus 1. All right? So we have epsilon L2, 3 minus epsilon L3, 2. Now, what are the possible values for L here? If L is equal to 1, then we have 1, 2, 3, which is 1, minus 1, 3, 2, which is minus 1, so we get plus 1, so we get 2. But if L is equal to 2 or 3, then we get 2, 2, 3, which is 0, or, or 3, 2, 3, which is also 0, because it's repeated index. And here we also get either 2, 3, 2, or 3, 3, 2. In both of those cases, it's 0. So this is only non-zero if i is equal to j in the case where i is equal to 1. Okay, so now we'll do the same for all the other cases. Um, or at least the case i is equal to 2, because the, all the cases, they are all the same. So I just want this to be clear, just to make you comfortable with how to use the Levi Civita symbol, and well, and that's it. So this is 2 if i is equal to j, and it's 0 if i is different from j. So in i equal 2, we have epsilon L12, epsilon 212, immediately, this is 0, repeated index. Then we have epsilon L13, epsilon 213. 
then we have plus epsilon look at this l to one one uh, this will be 2 2 1 so this is also 0 so let's just go to the next one here we get 2 2 3 that's also 0 let's go to the next one we have L 3 1 epsilon 2 3 1 and this one is also 0 because we get epsilon 2 3 2 so in this case 2 th 2 1 3 this is an odd permutation so we get minus epsilon L 1 3 and here we have 2 3 1 now, how many permutations does this require? This means one, two permutations. So here we get plus epsilon L31. Okay, so what happens here in the different cases? If L is equal to one, or if it is equal to three, um, here we get one, one, three, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, uh, three, three, one. This is zero, okay? And if L is equal to two, which means it is equal to I, then we get a minus epsilon 2, 1, 3 plus epsilon 2, 3, 1. This one is an odd permutation, so we get minus minus 1, which is 1. And this one here is an even permutation, so we get minus minus 1, so again, 1. Where we get two minus signs, it's even in the end, that's y and bam, 2. So again, the result here, basically, like just going back to this, you can now go and do the third case by yourself, it's exactly the same, and you should also get that it is two if i is equal to j, which is three in this case, and zero in all other cases. So this means two delta i, j, I l, sorry, i l, um, i l. So that is what this is. So, right, so this part is simply two times delta i l, so two times delta i l, so uh, what we now here expect uh, is that, let's see, uh, this we divide by two, so we get one half here, and i and l have to be the same, so this l right there we simply turn into an i, otherwise it's all going to be zero, and there we go. So this is uh, basically what we found, and if we want to make this look like what we knew before, right, just put this one half, we can just multiply everything by one half, and we can see that our alpha tildes times one half, this is simply one over four, epsilon i, j, k, sigma i, j. So, right, so the, the spin operator that we found uh, earlier can be written in terms of these new gamma matrices. That is the whole point, right? We can now write down the spin matrices or the spin operators in terms of these new gamma matrices, okay? So that's what's so important here. It may look uh, unnice, but keep in mind, right, the i, j's here, they contract, you get rid of them, you end up just with the k, which is why there's a k there as well. So with this, we now have all the matrices that we want. So we can now write them collectively as a uh, big gamma, and we have several of them. So we have the unity matrix, of which we have one, and this we will add here an s. Now, you don't really need to worry about what the S stands for just now. It stands for scalar, right? Because it's about how it transforms under a Lorentz transformation. But you shouldn't really worry about it too much because we'll go into in, in depth into everything that is Lorentz transformation and how things transform in a little bit. I'm just going to be using the notation that you will probably find elsewhere, um, right? This transforms as a vector. The ones that transform as a vector is gamma mu, of which we have four. Um, but don't worry about that. Uh, we will see it soon enough. We have sigma mu nus, which are six. We have the uh, the gamma five gamma mu, of which we have four, and we have the gamma. Uh, this is the gamma five, the pseudo vector of which we have one. So here we have in total eight, ten, sixteen, which is precisely what we wanted. So there we go. We have found all 16 matrices that we needed. And along the way, we practiced a bunch of different things that are very useful um, when, you know, just dealing with gamma matrices. Now, in the next video, we will just go in depth and solve a bunch of just different uh, algebra problems with gamma matrices so that you can learn how to use them and so that you can be comfortable with all sort of tensor operations uh, so that we can then just go straight into Lorentz transformations and then continue with quantum field theory itself. Um, so there we go. I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe. 
and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.